City, and it is time for baseball. As Direct TV presents New York Yankees baseball. It's opening day in the Bronx. Today, it's the Toronto Blue Jays against the New York Yankees in the first of three from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball, along with David Cohn and Ken Singleton. I'm Michael Kay. Everything old is new again. It's opening day, and most teams, except for the Cardinals and the Cubs, they are 0-0 zero and zero right now as we start. And there's something special about this day. I know it's just one of 162, but it's a special one. Yeah, all the work you've put in over the winter as a player and all the work you do in spring training culminates today. Now it's for real. Statistics will count from this point on. And you think about it as a former player. I think that this is the day you look forward to. It's been a long, cold winter. I know it's been cold for the fans and the players. It's time to get serious. It's time for baseball. Which means it's time for a pitching matchup. And let's take a look at this one brought to you by People's United Bank. See what know-how can do. Drew Hutchison, the youngster, will get the start for the Toronto Blue Jays. And for the Yankees, it's Masahiro Tanaka. A good rookie year that was slowed down with an injury last year, David. What do we expect from him this year? Well, I think you expect from Tanaka to be a complete pitcher. He's going to mix his pitches, throw strikes. He's got great control, good splitter. He's talked about the velocity being down a little bit. Everybody's going to be watching his elbow. But what an honor. He's really taking this as such to get the opening day start here in the Bronx as a Yankee. He wants this spotlight. He relishes it. I think you're going to see a big day from Tanaka. It should be fun. The Yankees against the Blue Jays. It's just a gorgeous day in the Bronx. It was opened up from central casting. Just perfect. The Yankees and the Blue Jays. We're closing in on baseball. Stick around right here on Yes. Time, any place, anywhere, anytime, let's ride. Say,
Subway restaurants. Get any football for $6 or less. April only. Subway. Eat fresh. Limited time only at participating restaurants. By your tri-state BFW centers. And by Chase. For more ways to serve you in your neighborhood and on the go. Well, just a gorgeous day in New York City, and uh, after an awful, awful winter in the Northwest to have a uh, Northeast to have something like this on this day, well, the baseball gods are certainly smiling down upon the Yankees and the Blue Jays. Welcome year one AD, and that of course is after Derek Jeter. It seems a little strange that the captain is not at shortstop, but it is D.D. Gregorius's job. Both of these teams are kind of remade, possibly the Blue Jays a little bit more so than the Yankees, but the Yankees are a team that have spackled some holes that they thought was going to be a problem and if all of their answers are an or all of their questions david are answered in the affirmative this yankee team could be very good and very very competitive yeah, absolutely i think you expect a bounce back from the middle of their lineup namely obviously carlos beltran mark to healthy this spring chase headley had a great spring i think he's a outstanding addition for the full year that you're going to see so I mean, you know, a lot of ifs, but the Yankees had a really good spring training. They all feel positive. They feel good about it. So I think you can expect a bounce back from their veterans in the middle of their order. And Kenny, on the Blue Jays side, this team has not been in the postseason since 1993, the longest drought of any team in Major League Baseball. And they went to work over the winter, and they remade this team. Yeah, they did. They, they brought in a lot of youngsters. They have six rookies on their ball club, and some of them are, are very talented young players. I think of Pompey, who's going to be in the center field. I also think of uh, a veteran that they brought to this club, Russell Martin, to take over the catching, a former Yankee, and he'll be batting second, and it'll be a big part of what's going on with the Blue Jays this summer. And there is Russell Martin. The Blue Jays just came from Montreal, where in two games against the Reds, they played in front of 96 thousand people so some of their youngsters they have six rookies on the 25-man roster kind of wide-eyed about that and obviously they'll be wide-eyed playing here on the biggest stage in baseball opening on broadway at yankee stadium against the yankees so the yankees were introduced uh, before the game as were the blue jays and i don't think it was that much of a surprise maybe the fact that it was 70 30 was a bit of a surprise but alex rodriguez who was suspended all of last year because of the ped and biogenesis involvement David, that was a loud ovation, about 70-30, I'd say. Very much so. And no one knew what to expect in spring training, what kind of a circus atmosphere it was going to be. And from the Yankees' standpoint, and Alex's for that matter, it could not have gone better. He Not only did he show that he still had bat speed and some power, but he handled himself extremely well, sort of reintegrated himself back into that clubhouse. Well, John Gibbons, the Blue Jay manager, and Joe Girardi, the Yankee manager, exchanging the lineup cards. And... The Yankees will now take the field for the first time in the regular season of 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the field for today's ceremonial first pitch. He managed the Yankees for 12 seasons and led them to six American League pennants and four world championships. He is the fifth winningest manager in Major League Baseball history and last year was inducted into Baseball's Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. And later tonight, he'll be honored at the New York Yankees homecoming dinner with the 2015 Pride of the Yankees Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back number six, Joe Torrey. So the four-time world champion Yankee manager and Hall of Famer said he was a little worried about throwing the first pitch. He was thinking about warming up, but uh, stood in front of the mound, made a pretty good throw. That's the safe play. Definitely stay <laughs> off of the bump and stay in the grass. Shorten the distance. Now, a lot of guys who throw out the first pitch, I was told this from a couple people, the mistake they make is keeping on their sport coat, and then they can't really extend the arm. But Joe Torre obviously knew exactly what he was doing in there. He talks with the man who succeeded him as a Yankee manager, Joe Jordy. So we're about ready for baseball here in the Bronx. Let's take a look at the Blue Jays starting lineup put together by manager John Gibbons. Jose Reyes, the shortstop, will lead off. Batting second and catching former Yankee Russell Martin. 
Jose Bautista. He's in right field. He'll bat third. Cleaning up first baseman Edwin Encarnacion. Newly acquired Josh Donaldson. He came over from the A's. The third baseman will bat fifth. Batting sixth. Another former Yankee DH, Deanna Navarro. Dalton Pompey in center field will bat seventh. Batting eighth and playing left field, Kevin Pillar. And Devin Travis is the second baseman. And he is going to bat ninth. You can see there's Masahiro Tanaka taking his final warm-up tosses before the first pitch of the season. And the season gets underway for the New York Yankees. Those are his, those are his numbers from a year ago. 20 starts, excellent numbers, 13 and 5, 2.77 ERA, less than a hit per inning. He made the all-star team a year ago in his first year in the major leagues. Let's check out the pitcher scouting report brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. Three's a charm. Tanaka actually made three starts against the Toronto Blue Jays last year, and he won them all. 3 0 against Toronto, and in 18 and a third innings, he had 22 strikeouts uh, against a very good hitting team. And uh, back in Japan, before he turned pro, he set an all time record for strikeouts. He broke the record of Daisuke Matsuzaka, who pitched for the Red Sox for a while, and uh, well, that record has not been broken as of yet, so. Tanaka gets the start on opening day here, and the Yankees can only hope he can hold up through the whole season. Now let's check out the Yankee defense, a new shortstop. It's D.D. Gregorius in the defense presented by our good friends at Geico. In the outfield, you've got Gardner, Ellsbury, and Beltron left to right. Infield, Headley, Gregorius, Stephen Drew, and Teixeira third to first. Brian McCann's behind the plate, and Kenny told you all about Masahiro Tanaka. Tanaka's ready, so's Reyes. And let's do it here in the Bronx. And the first pitch is a strike, and we're underway. Blue Jays 19 and 13 in spring training. Tanaka deals 0 and 2. A couple of off-speed pitches to get things going. Dropped in a curveball for strike one. Now another off-speed pitch and. Here's the hold you don't want to be in against Tanaka 0 and 2 because that splitter comes into play. And the pitch swing and a miss. Ray is down on strikes. Let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. In a word gorgeous but we'll give you more words than that 60 degrees not much wind. It's mostly sunny and there's no chance of rain. Here is Russell Martin, the big free agent signing for the Toronto Blue Jays. And talking to people around the Blue Jays, he's already changed the culture of that clubhouse and brought along a winning attitude, the way to do things right. Had a good season last year with Pittsburgh. Well, Michael, you mentioned the Blue Jays played in Montreal a couple extra Bishop games as A-Rod gets the cheer from the Bleacher Creatures in the right center field. And 96,000 fans in two games. And Martin's from Montreal, so it meant a lot to him. Count one and one. And he got special treatment from the fans in uh, Montreal and as a native son. And it shows you they're trying to get a team back. That's what they're trying to do by drawing that many fans for two exhibition games. Tanaka working quickly. And the count two and one on Martin. In his career in Japan, Masahiro Tanaka started just one opening day. That was in 2012. And his start today breaks a string. Of starts by CC Sabathia on the first game of the year. CC will start game three. And the 3 1. There's a strike. Now Tanaka said, and he's been very uh, forthright about it, I'm going to be throwing a lot of two seam fastballs, not as many four seam. So without the four seam, you're not going to see the velocity that you saw in the past. Joe Girardi today said, let's wait and see. <laughs> And the pitch. Grounded in the hole. Grabbed there by Head. Two away. Well, 
these are the uh, last six pitchers to start opening days for the Yankees. Tanaka today, CC Sabathia, starting in 2009 through last year, Ching Ming Wong, Carl Pavano, Randy Johnson, and Mike Messina. Tanaka, the 56th different opening day starter in team history. It's Bautista fouls it back. You know, Tanaka is facing a very strong lineup today. The Blue Jays are second in the league in home runs. But their first five hitters in their lineup, about as good a five as you're going to see in the American League. And Jose Bautista is right in the middle of it for manager John Gibbons, followed by Edwin Encarnacion. It's a great point, Kenny. Maybe two of the toughest. Back to back right handed power hitters in Major League Baseball. And they traded for Josh Donaldson, who uh, was a pretty tough number five hitter. He drove in 98 runs last year for the Oakland A's. Now, this is a much better first start and first inning for Tanaka than last year. Last year, the third pitch of his Major League Baseball career was hit for a home run by Melky Cabrera. Melky's now with the White Sox and Tanaka says, so I don't have to worry about him. <laughs> the 2-1. Two, 2-2. Two and, two. and you notice he started Reyes off with a curveball and then, and then another off-speed pitch and put him away with a split. So there was no fastball to the first hitter. You hear that rhythmic applause when the, the hitter against Tanaka gets two strikes. Got him. Strong first inning from Masahiro Tanaka. He retires. The Blue Jays in order. Toronto nothing. And the New York Yankees coming to bat. For the Blue Jays, and here's the Yankees starting lineup, and he's going to base presented by Lexus. Jacoby Ellsbury in center field will lead off, batting second. Left fielder Brett Gardner, Carlos Beltran in right will hit third. Cleaning up first baseman Mark Teixeira, Brian McCann will bat fifth, he'll catch. Chase Headley at third base will bat sixth. Batting seventh, the DH, Alex Rodriguez, Stephen Drew at second base will hit eighth. And batting ninth, and playing shortstop, D.D. Gregorius. Blue Jays are hoping for big things from Drew Hutchison this year. Uh, last year he was 11 and 13 with a 4.4 ADRA, but he improved as the season went along. He had 32 starts. You can see the strikeout totals there, about one per inning. As we check out the uh, pitcher scouting report brought to you by your try on the dealers, we'll do this quickly. In 214, he led the Jays and K's with 184. He's a familiar foe for the Yankees, and uh, I'll get to that in just a second. Look out! Oof. Well, maybe too familiar. He started six times against the Yankees last year. As that is up and in to Jacoby Ellsbury, who was uh, squaring the butt. He pitched in every series against the Yankees, went two and four, had a decision in every start, and 25 to 35. The Blue Jays do not have a pitcher 
between the ages of 25 and 35 in their rotation. Either all young guys or all grizzled veterans. There's two vets in Burley and Dickey and Hutchison and Sanchez uh, make up the youngsters in their rotation. See Ellsbury's numbers in his first season with the Yankees. And he's down to the count one and two. Uh, Blue Jays only team in the major leagues to fall into that category. Well, it's very telling that this kid's on the mound today in, in the opening game. And Mark Burley's not going to pitch in the series at all. And that makes sense, David. Burley is 1 in 14 with a 6.21 ERA against the Yankees. So John Gibbons wanted no part of that early. <laughs> When does that become psychological, Coney? Was there a team that you struggled against? Uh, everybody goes through it. I think you should, if you take those numbers out of Burley's career stats, I think they look a heck of a lot better. He's had a great career either way. And Ellsbury down on strikes. All right, let's check out the Blue Jays defense presented by Geico. Donaldson at third, Reyes at short. The youngster Travis is going to play second base and Carnacion at first. In the outfield, it's Pilar, Pompey, and Bautista left to right. Russell Martin behind the plate, and we told you about Drew Hutchison on the mound. Yeah, the Blue Jays uh, go from here to Baltimore, and Burley will pitch in Baltimore in that series. You think it would change year to year, Kenny, for pitchers in, in regards to Burley? Gardner hits one deep to right field. Back is Bautista. Leaps and he makes the play. Taking an extra base hit away from Gardner. I think one of the more underrated things about Jose Bautista is his defensive ability. This guy can play third base pretty well, but he's also one of the better right fielders in the league. This is an excellent catch as he holds on after crashing into the wall. The leap at the end into the wall, holds on, makes the catch. He's got a strong arm. He's a good right fielder. Beltron takes a strike. The line drive, too. He had yeah. to get back there quick. That was not a fly ball. It's almost like Gardner hit it too well. Now, we talk about a lot of the question marks with the Yankees, and here's such a key for the Yankees. A switch hitter in the number three spot in the lineup has to play right field because of A-Rod at the D8 spot. Coming back from the uh, elbow problems last year. And the Yankees would like to see a return to the old Carlos Beltran. Played through a lot of pain last year. Decided to play through it rather than have the elbow surgery. Move the chip and the spur. But he had it during the offseason. He said he feels great now. Right in on the hands. You know, the numbers wouldn't suggest it, but he swung the bat much better in spring training than he did uh, during the course of. Uh, last season, you know, coming out of spring training, hitting 225, that's nothing to write home about. He didn't hit a home run, so that first one is going to feel awfully, awfully good to him. He did not go. Home plate umpire today is Fielding Culbreth. Jim Reynolds at first. Manny Gonzalez at second. Paul Schreiber is over there. We mentioned that Hutchinson got better as the year went along. He changed the grip on his slider, David, and his strikeout rate went up as well. Just started uh, having more control of that pitch, better break on it, getting more strikeouts, and ended the season 11 and 13. If it wasn't for the Yankees, he probably would have been at least a 500 pitcher, maybe even better. He went two and four against the Yankees in those six decisions. It's finding an out pitch for the left handed batters that Hutchinson's been looking for. Beltron. Fly ball shallow right. Easy play this time for Bautista and Hutchison works a one, two, three first inning. So we go to the second. Nothing, nothing here on Yes.
Baseball, I'm Meredith Morakovitz. It's time now for today's injury report brought to you by Montefiore Medical Center, Inspired Medicine. While the majority of the Yankees made it up north without any injury issues, there are a few guys that are starting on the DL. Brendan Ryan, Chris Capuano, Jose Perella, also Yvonne Nova coming back from Tommy John surgery. Yvonne Nova targeting sometime in June. Chris Capuano, that's still a question mark, probably not till May for him. But they do have some options when those guys come back. For now, though, my Michael, Adam Warren in that starting rotation. And thank you, Meredith. We'll hear from Meredith throughout the game. And because of the injury to Brendan Ryan, the Yankees went out and acquired Gregorio Petit, and he is their backup infielder. Count one and one on Encarnacion. Takes a big hack and fouls it off. Encarnacion missed some time in spring training with a bad back, and it's the same thing that had him on a disabled list last year. Despite the fact that he missed so much time last year, he still hit 34 home runs and drove in 98 runs. Just missed his third straight 100 RBI season. This guy is a dangerous hitter. He's got a very quick bat. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number three for Tanaka. Not quick enough on that one. This is Tanaka's slider. Did you see the tight spin? Even though he probably didn't get it exactly where he wanted to, and Carnacion still out in front of it. Carnacion, a great fastball hitter, always looking dead red, always looking to do damage. Now he'll face Josh Donaldson, acquired from the A's for Brett Laurie, two minor league pitchers and a minor league infielder. And there's a strike. Yeah, I think the Blue Jays got tired of waiting on Brett Laurie. He was he was a very popular player in Toronto because he's a native Canadian. But the fact is, he was injured quite a bit. Play, he played hard. But uh, the Blue Jays had a chance to pick up Donaldson, who's one of the better third basemen in the league. In fact, hit more home runs than any third baseman in the league last year. And he's also a good defender, made the All Star team. So they got an All Star to play third base, who uh, plays a lot of ball games. 158 games last year. And Laurie, as Kenny said, had a hard time staying on the field. The 0 2. Grounded to third. Headley gobbles it up. Two away. Tanaka started off gangbusters last year, looking like he would be a Cy Young candidate. And had a bad start in Cleveland. And they discovered a 10% tear in his UCLA, UCL. And uh, three separate doctors recommended that he not have surgery, rehab it. Came back, made two starts at the end of the year. And um, really worked without problem, without incident at all in spring training. And has come out of the box strong right here. In four spring starts, Tanaka had a 3.07 ERA. One more. John Navarro was the starter last year as a catcher, but when they acquired Russell Martin, Navarro wasn't very happy. In fact, he wanted to be traded, but now he's going to get a chance to play back up first base, be a designated hitter, and uh, just won't do as much catching. He could not hold up, and very early, Tanaka's stuff seems short. Tanaka very unpredictable so far today. He's already mixed in all of his pitches, and he's a complete pitcher. Four different pitches. Curve, slider, split, and a couple of different fastballs. Is that the two-seamer he's working on, Dave? Yeah, he's trying to paint the inside corner 91 miles an hour on his two-seamer. With Tanaka's style and his splitter, that is plenty of velocity. Just missed. That was 93 miles an hour. That was more true. That was a four seam. Definitely. He's trying to paint the outside corner with a four seamer and just misses off. On well, Navarro's shadow has good play coverage. And the 3 2. 
Nope, the other way. Going to be a tough play for Headley. He cannot grab it. And Navarro will reach. First base run of the game. And that is a base hit. Well, the shift was on somewhat as uh, they were pulled over with Navarro. Left handed hitter. Well, the switch hitter batting left hand was at the plate. And there was only one play for Headley. He tried to bare hand and throw back across the body to make the play. Had to go a long way to get it and couldn't make the play. So it's going to go as an infield single. See the spin right off the end of the bat, the cue ball. Very tough chance for Headley. Here is Dalton Pompey. Now with Russell Martin and Pompey, it's the first time in Blue Jays team history that they have two Canadian born players on an opening day line. And the last time that happened in Major League Baseball, two Canadian players in an opening day line, we have to go back to the 1946 Washington Senators. Jeff Heath and Sherry Robertson. Really? So Martin I grew up in Montreal and uh, Pompeii just outside of Toronto, Mississauga, which is a suburb of Toronto, but Mississauga is a pretty big city. Hammer in the right center on the run. Belchon, he makes the play and then hits into the auxiliary scoreboard for the final out. Of the second. No runs a hit, no errors, and one man left. We go to the bottom of the second. Nothing, nothing. Day afternoon in New York City, no score, bottom of the second. To Sheriff McCann and Headley against Drew Hutchison. And there's a strike. Hutchison, the youngest starter in an opening game, game for the Blue Jays in their history. To Sheriff goes the other way. Long run for Pilar. That'll make the seats out of play. He breaks the uh, previous mark. Held by Todd Stottlemyre, who started in 1990, and he was 97 days older than Drew Hutchison. Hutchison, another pitcher who's uh, fought his way back from Tommy John surgery. I think they said about three or four pitchers on every staff have had it. Some teams more than others, of course.
And the go to. Yeah, poor Tommy John, right? Pretty nice career, 280 something wins. <laughs> really, uh, nobody wants to talk about anything but an elbow when you hear his name. I was there when he walked off the mound with the original injury. And Dr. Joe pioneered the uh, surgery that uh, I, I wouldn't like to say it's commonplace, but it happens quite a bit nowadays. To Sheriff goes down looking. Time for today's conversation brought to you by Toyota. Toyota is the official hybrid vehicle of the Yankees. Let's see how we started the conversation on opening day. What team has the best starting rotation in the American League East and why? And here's one of the responses Grant G. YN26. Yankees do because if Tanaka and Pineda stay healthy, they'll have the best one two punch in the entire American League. McCann takes outside. Follow Yes Network and tweet us your responses using hashtag Yankees Prius to keep the conversation going. Count one and one on McCann. Blue Jays shift for McCann. Three infielders on the right side. Now the last exhibition game the Yankees played in Washington. McCann came up leading off an inning. You see the shift is on and the Nationals did the same thing. He hit a ball to the opposite field. That almost down the third baseline for a double. Stephen Drew followed with a home run. And he was he was leading off the inning. So he got something going. Pitchers do not like the pitch with men on base. There's more pressure. Drew hit a homer, drew the Yankees to three to two. Chris Young hit a two run homer later. The Yankees won four three. So there is a time in my mind to try and go the other way. If they're going to shift like that and give you hits, you take them. That one's popped up. On that left side, the catch is made by Donaldson for the second. That's going to bring up Headley. Blue Jays not expecting that much length out of their starters early, and that's why they made the decision to carry eight pitchers in the bullpen with a three man bench. Pitch outside to Headley. Definitely an American League roster. Something you can get away with because of the DH. John Gibbons is also named Brett Cecil as the closer. Was a few games last year, not not all that many. So he's got a new closer. He's got a uh, a youngster in rotation, Aaron Sanchez, who was supposed to be the closer, but the injury to Marcus Stroman necessitated the move of Sanchez into the starting rotation. That really hurt the Blue Jays when Stroman went down with an ACL injury and is out for the season. Loop the other way and out of play. With Headley at the plate. Had a great spring. Hit over 300. Hit three home runs. Led the Yankees in hits with 18. Swing the bat well from both sides of the plate. The 2-2. Two -two. Yankees 17 and 16 in spring training. And for the most part stayed healthy. We talked about that injury. To Brendan Ryan. The 2 2. Swing and a miss. Headley down on strike, so we'll have to wait to the third inning for Alex Rodriguez to make his first at bat. We go to the third inning. There's no score on yes.
Direct TV. If you call yourself a sportsman, you've got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. All right, we go to the third inning. Both pitchers dealing. Nothing, nothing. It'll be 8 9 and 1 in the Blue Jay order, starting with the left fielder, Kevin Pilar. On the mound, Masahiro Tanaka. And on the outing scoreboard, the 8 3 scoreboard, it's nothing, nothing. Now, two scoreless innings for Tanaka, that's a little different than last year because if you remember, his ERA in the first two innings of games was 4.08. After that, he pitched to a 2.23. So he has a, a strong first two innings in his first start. Now, there's been a lot of talk about the diminished velocity, which he says is by design because of throwing the two seamers. And, and David, I looked this up. According to pitch FX data, last year, the average velocity on his four-seam fastball was 91.1. So it wasn't like he was dealing in the upper 90s. Well, he's been pretty much 90 to 93 today on the top end. Probably averaging right there, 90 miles an hour. It's sitting there, and he's been able to throw four seamers and get it up to 92, 93 today. So not that far off, at Michael, to answer your question than what he was last year. The 2 1. Grounded past the diving Headley. And down the left field line. Played out there by Gardner. Big turn by Pilar. Nice play by Gardner. Holding Pilar to a single. Well, that's about knowing your home ballpark as Brett Gardner plays an excellent left field here at Yankee Stadium. First of all, let's see how close Headley comes to this. Not far off. A look at that uh, brought to you by Yesmo and your Tri State's Mercedes Benz dealer. And here comes Gardner. Plays the carom perfectly and makes a strong throw to Stephen Drew. And Pilar, well, he made the right decision. Hold on at first. Here is Devin Travis, the first a throw over. Now, Meredith Barakovic spoke with Brian McCann today about Tanaka and the velocity. What did he say, Meredith? And, Michael, I asked him how much that's going to affect him on the mound, and he looked at me and just said, not at all. It's not like this is a guy with two or three pitches. He has a lot of weapons in his arsenal as far as pitches are concerned, and he said if that splitter is the same as it was last season and he can throw that with conviction, that's what's going to make him have success this season. So all about the splitter, all about the control, and for the most part, we've seen a lot of that so far today. 1-0 count here on Travis. Travis should be an interesting story for these Blue Jays as he steps in there. He was uh, played a double A baseball last year in the Tiger system. He was traded for Anthony Ghost. Ghost going uh, to Detroit to play center field. Now they weren't sure if Travis was going to make the team in spring training. In fact, they thought the job was going to go to Meister Asturias, the veteran, but he uh, is injured, groin muscle. And Ryan Goins, well, he hadn't hit all that much since having a chance at second. So Travis gets the uh, opportunity here from double A to the big leagues. And he had a good spring. He had 359 this spring, and that uh, kind of opened some eyes for the manager and the GM. Well, he really did. And smooth around the back, too. Handles second base very well. Good footwork. Turns a double play exception well. So Tanaka in his first jam, first and second. Nobody out top of the order coming up. Let's see how the Blue Jays want to play this. Reyes was a strikeout victim his first time. Well, he, uh, he got Hedley in on the grass. And the sheriff got even with the bag at first. So the Yankees are expecting the bunt. And Reyes early shows bunt, but that doesn't mean he's going to actually do it. And he does bunt, pushes it toward third. Going to be a tough play. And he throws it past to Sheriff. Pilar will score. Travis stops at third, and Reyes is at second. The Blue Jays have a 1 0 lead. I believe that'll be a sacrifice and an E5 on the throw. 
looks like Headley gets blocked by Tanaka. Tanaka comes over, makes a stab at it, and misses it. You see Headley kind of with a not real good handle on the ball, and Teixeira trying to get off the bag and get there and just cannot reach far enough. See Tanaka with the stab, almost a little shielding of Headley there, which caused a little hesitation in getting the ball. Seems to be a problem with Reyes at second base. He's had a lot of leg problems throughout his career, so they're going to check him out. We told you three-man bench for the Blue Jays. They do not have the depth to absorb that sort of injury, so let's see if Reyes is okay. It might have been, uh, you know, that going down the first baseline and then the trying to advance the second, really changing direction. Let's, let's see what happens. I also wonder, Kenny, if you watch the other replay, Teixeira's foot was on first base. And in order not to step on Teixeira's foot, it looked like Reyes caught the edge of the bag right here. And maybe he landed awkwardly. A good call, Michael, as you see. He did yeah. and land awkwardly. And then runs up Drew's back a little bit right on the heels of, as Michael described properly, a little bit of a twist of the ankle there to avoid Teixeira's foot. Yeah, there was a lot happening on that play at first base. I said the Yankees play the infield back. They'll give up another run with Russell Martin at the plate. Second and third. Nobody out here in the top of the third. And there's a base hit to right field. Travis scores. Reyes stopped and he speeds up again. He will score. It's a two run single for Martin and it's three nothing Toronto. Well, Toronto's made the most of this opportunity, initial opportunity to gain the score, helped along with an error. Russell Martin hit 360 last year with runners in scoring position. So this is nothing new for him as he comes through with a hit to drive in two runs. Great job by Martin there. That was not a bad pitch down and away at 93. Martin looking to go the other way the whole time. Here's Jose Bautista. And a strike from Tanaka. Well, if you look at home run leaders since 2010 on the Honda League leaders board, Jose Bautista sits atop that board with 187 home runs. Oh, and two. Yeah, he doesn't get cheated. I, I think one thing that's remarkable about those numbers, remember Bautista missed some time. Uh, he had a, a wrist injury very similar to Mark Deshera's. Had to have surgery on the wrist, and has come back uh, to pound the ball. A very popular player, not only in Canada but throughout Major League Baseball, Batista. Had more All Star votes than anybody last year. You had youngsters coming to the ballpark at the Rogers Center with that full beard. <laughs> they wear Batista uniforms. High fly ball, left field. For the first half. He knows he just missed that one. It's a Tanaka slider in the middle of the plate. You can see he's just a little out in front of it. He turns his hips open a little too quickly, and that reaction tells you what you need to know. Yeah, it's a good thing we didn't have the sound up on that. Pitch up and in to Encarnacion. Not that much in. And Carnacion struck out in the second inning. Two runs in, three runs in on two hits and an error. Over the first two against Hutchinson, the Yankees have not managed the base run. Not 
Tanaka looks back at this third inning. Can't help but think about the bottom of the order of the Blue Jays. It really got this inning set up. Pilar turning on inside fastball down the line and then the walk to Travis really set this inning up right before the Reyes bunt. Ball with the breaking ball on 2 0. Count 2 and 1. Now you've got hitters like Batista and Encarnacion. You fall behind them, two balls and no strikes. You're looking for what they want. It's a fastball. It's a breaking ball, well thrown for a strike. He just took it. Just, uh, that's not what he was looking for. That one is drilled to left field. Going back, Gardner on the track at the wall. See ya. A two run home run for Encarnacion. And the Blue Jays lead 5 0. That's what he was looking for. He got a fastball and hammered it. And as he goes around the bases, you saw him walking the parrot. His patented way of circling the bases with that right arm extended and kind of held up. Right, right there. When you're coming in on Encarnacion, you better miss in off the plate. And the miss was the other way, back towards the middle. Breaking ball of Donaldson is outside. To me, it's really about the control. Tanaka's stuff has been fine. Ella talk about the velocity. Certainly not a problem today. It's really about the control. Missing his location. One and one. That is centered. Now the Blue Jays are a home run hitting team, particularly in their own ballpark where they don't have to deal uh, with any weather situations, uh, with the exception when they open the roof. But you know, early season cold weather doesn't doesn't apply in Toronto. The Yankees get the bullpen busy early. Two and two. That's Neil Rogers who was battling for that fifth spot in the rotation, which Adam Warren won. He gets up early. Not what you want to see on opening day. Your long man up in the third. Rounded to short. Gregorius bobbles, regains. Two outs. I think Yankee fans who uh, just had a glance at Gregorius, even with the bobble, he can still get it across the diamond. So he. He can always make up for something like this. In fact, the ball never hit the ground. He caught it while it was in the air and he guns it across for the out. It's very strong throwing arm. Here's Navarro. Up the middle, and there's Gregorius. And that'll do it. Well, the Blue Jays take a 5 0 lead. We go to the bottom of the third. Alex Rodriguez will lead it off.
Alex Rodriguez just introduced to the stadium crowd. It's a warm hand. He got one of the loudest hands during the introductions before the game. This is his first appearance in a big league game since the end of 2013. Batting seventh and DH. And there's a strike. We all know the story. He was suspended last year for his involvement in the biogenesis situation. Missed the entire season. Came into spring training, seemed somewhat humble. Did everything right the way he dealt with the media, the way he dealt with the fans. And now he has to produce. Very apologetic during the course of spring training. Audi A3 scoreboard has the Blue Jays up 5 0. Last time A Rod started in the bottom third of the order in a regular season game was 1996. He hit eighth when he played for Seattle. That was against the Twins. And everyone remembers in 2006, game four, Joe Torrey batted him eighth in the ALDS. Count two and two on A-Rod as he leads off the bottom of the third. Had a pretty good spring at the plate. His last game, though, which was in D.C. at Nationals Park, he was booed loudly and also struck out three times. And he says he's going to have to be prepared for that on occasions where the Yankees play on the road. And the first road game is a week from today in Baltimore. That's something he showed down in Tampa a lot. A good eye at the plate. He's always had that. Yeah, I believe he led the Yankees in base on balls in spring training and the, the, the held his on base percentage uh, up near the 40% mark. 3 2. See, there's a 94 mile an hour fastball. Pretty good heater from Drew Hutchison, and that's the thing that might separate A Rod from the A Rod of the past. A rod of the past three and two, you get a fastball in the wrong spot. No matter how hard you threw it, he was going to get to it and really smoke it. Now, you know, you get a little older, your bat slows down a bit, and it's harder to catch up with those pitches. And A rod works a lot. Yankees first base runner. It's a good at bat from Alex, and you can see the formula, Kenny. You're right. They're going to test him in several fastballs in. To see if he can still get to that fastball. Now, one of the hitters that uh, we've talked about several of the Yankee hitters being a key, like Bell trying to share. I really think Stephen Drew is a key too. He, he can't be as bad as he was last year. I mean, he's got to hit much better, and he showed signs of that in spring training. He hit three home runs. I believe he hit near 260 in spring training, 259 to be exact. But that's what he did last year with the. Boston and the Yankees. Now remember, he didn't have spring training last year. This year, he had a full spring training, and he was swinging the bat pretty well during during the course of spring training in Tampa. Now, last year, between the Red Sox and the Yankees, he had a 162 batting average, 237 on base percentage, and slugged at 299. The last time players were that low in the American League. In three categories, over 300 plus plate appearances, you have to go back to 1909. High fly ball, shallow right center. Bautista makes a play on the run. I think Bautista got fooled on that. He took one step back. Sometimes you see a big swing, and he really had to come on as that ball was much shallower than he thought originally to make the play. And one reason I say that Drew is a key because if he's going to bat behind A Rod, to get A Rod better pitches to hit, yep. Drew's going to have to swing the bat a little bit. Here's D.D. Gregorius, his first at bat as a Yankee. That one's popped up. Donaldson makes the play for the second half. Something in on his hands and popped him up.
Here's Jacoby Ellsbury as we go back to the top of the lineup. Ellsbury struck out in the first inning. One thing Hutchison does very well is he tries to establish the in inside part of the plate, both the lefties and righties. Predominantly fastball slider pitcher. He does have a changeup, but it's still sort of a work in progress. But he does feature two seamer, good movement, good life. Pitches up and down in the zone with his fastball. That was chopped to first. And Carnacion steps on the bag, and the Yankees still looking for their first hit. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on base. Three in the books. Five nothing Jays. North, who reminds you to take the train to the game. Two more games against Toronto Wednesday and Thursday evening. Then the Red Sox come to town, an early visit by the arch rivals. First game on Pits 11 as the Yankees return to their over the air broadcast route Saturday and Sunday. Yes, and then ESPN. Then on to the road, a long road trip Baltimore, Tampa Bay, and then Detroit after that. Pits to Pompeii. Blown away, one and zero. Yeah, you're talking about Yankees returning to the broadcast roots. Growing up, Michael, you watched the Yankees on picks. Eleven alive. Yeah. Lincoln Motor Car Company scoreboard five nothing. Blue Jays lead in the fourth. That's right. Scooter, yeah. Bill White, Frank Messer. Mm -hmm. We mentioned that uh, Pompey's from Mississauga. We looked up to see how big a town Mississauga is. It's bigger than several big league cities. 668,000 population. High fly ball down the right field line. Beltron on the track into the corner, but it goes foul. And Mississauga is the sixth largest city in Toronto, but it's a, in uh, Canada, but it's a suburb of Toronto. So a lot of fans rooting for Dalton Pompey. Pompey with a fly ball to right in the second. Michael Saunders was going to be a big part of this team in the outfield, but tore a meniscus in his left knee while shagging flies during spring training. That was a big setback for the Blue Jays. That really was a tough spring, injury wise. Big pieces, as Michael said. Saunders and Kenny mentioned before Stroman. Marcus Stroman was a big time arm in the rotation. 
Jack Swain, did he go? No, said Paul Schreiber. And Saunders would have been yet another Canadian player on the Blue Jays. Strike three. Pompey down looking. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking, widget, and more every night on every device. Blackout restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. There's an opening day ball, and it's a little different. And then the previous baseballs that we've had over the last couple of decades, this one has Rob Manfred's name on it. He is the new commissioner of baseball, and at a symposium that a couple of us attended over the winter, he said that's the coolest thing about being commissioner. <laughs> you can see his signature right there. So the Bud Selig or Allen Selig balls are now collector's items. Count 0 and 2 on Pilar. Yankees had the bullpen up when Tanaka struggled in the third. Tanaka gets the first out here in the fourth, and Esmeral Rogers has taken a seat out there. Yeah, it was Pilar who got things started with a single in the left field line. Just got it by Chase Headley at third. Another player we saw a little bit last year in the Blue Jays uniform. 53 games with Toronto. We saw him a lot in center field. This year he's playing left. There's a base hit to left field for Pilar. So he's two for two. Now seeing the, uh, the Blue Jays up 5 nothing here at the stadium is it, kind of odd. They're 14 and 42 here in the new ballpark. Since 2013, they're 3 and 17. And if you go back to the place across the street, since 2003, they're 32 and 70. Playing the Yankees in New York City. Runner goes. There's a strike. Go to second. Not in time. Stolen base for Pilar. Now, Joe Girardi. We'll get on the top step of the dugout and wait to see as the Yankees will look at this replay. Good job by McCann. That bait that is stolen off of Tanaka if indeed he's in there. As you see on the short hop, looks like his hand is in there. But what a jump by Pilar. He really stole that one off Tanaka. Although Drew's knee is in the way, so does merit a second look. Joe's going to come out and talk. That's one of the changes in the replay rule this year that the managers don't come out and stall. They'll wait on the top step of the dugout. Now, is Joe's thinking that he might have uh, lost contact with the bag with his hand while his knee was coming up onto the bag? Well, maybe that the hand never got there because, yeah. as David said, the knee was down by, uh, by Drew. He did have a great jump. In fact, when it looked over there, he was leaning towards second. He was thinking about going all the way. The left hand, does it get in contact with the bag? I don't, I don't think it, it could. And then it came off a little bit there at, at the end as you see Drew holds that tag on the entire time. Yeah, that might be too tough to over to. You can see Drew not giving him much to uh, shoot for there as far as a target to make contact with the base. Yeah, that, that, that's too tough to overturn, I believe. Big difference between head first slides and feet first slides with the spikes coming in. Yeah. So a stolen base for Pilar. See too many second basers with their knee in front of the bag if you're coming in feet first. It's kind of old school, isn't it? See, I'll tell you what, that knee, that his hand, his left hand it hit the hit knee, the knee yeah. of Drew. So I, I think he was out, but it's too close to challenge that because I'm not sure it would be overturned. But I, I don't believe his hand ever got to the bag the, the before last, he got tagged. The last angle was the best one. And Travis goes down on strikes. Watch this where his hand is at the knee, yep. touching his knee. Here comes the glove. And there's the tag. Yeah, he's out.
twice he was out because his hand came off the back at the end too before he got his foot back on. Here's Reyes. His sacrifice bunt made the, uh, the third inning a mess as Headley fielded it and threw it away past to Sharon. There were two runners on at that time. One runner scored, put runners on second and third, set up Russell Martin's two run single. One of the changes in the replute play rule this year, Michael, is if you get it right, then you retain the chance to challenge again. So you're not limited this year as opposed to last year. So if, you, if you go out and challenge Joe Girardi or any manager, when you get it right, you retain that challenge. You can challenge as many times throughout the course of the game as long as you are correct. All right, so if the umpires are having an awful day and they get nine calls wrong, you can challenge each one and you just you keep that challenge. You got to give Drew a lot of props at second base, Kenny. It seems like the new thing is that, and this is pretty much over the last 20 years, they field the ball in front of the bag and reach back. Yeah, he stays. He stays because the ball can move faster and you can actually reach back to make the tag. Bill Pennington, who used to cover the Yankees and now work, you know, works for the Times, has written a book about Billy Martin, and Billy Martin said, never go out and get the ball. He said, because you can't travel as fast as the ball can travel for you. You stay behind the bag and let the ball come to you. And Reyes walks. Chris Martin now up in the bullpen. Another thing that Billy used to say, which is, you know, he used to think ahead of everybody else. He said, never make a U-shaped tag. Always make a V-shaped tag because you'll get back to the runner sooner than the U-shape. A lot of coaches teach the pop tag, too, just the V-shaped tag and down and back up to show the umpire the ball. There's Russell Martin, his two-run single in the third. A big blow. Made it 3 nothing at the time. It's 5 nothing right now, top of the fourth. And with Martin signing with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays, it necessitated the Pittsburgh Pirates going out and get themselves a catcher. They traded for Francisco Cervelli, who is now a former Yankee. The Yankees got uh, Justin Wilson for the bullpen. Did not have a, a particularly good spring swing in the bat. He hit under 200. But I think the main thing for him, as with any catcher, and the same thing applied for Brian McCann last year with the Yankees, is learning your pitchers and the pitching staff. It's almost like your offense becomes secondary, and eventually it'll pick up. Russell Martin, a, a very solid hitter. I mentioned the fact that he hit well with runners in scoring position last year, and overall he hit 290 for the Pirates. One thing the Blue Jays really loved about Martin is on the five year deal that they gave him is that he's just a fantastic athlete, a workout maniac, and nutritionalist, and just legendary for the type of shape he keeps his body in. And the Blue Jays feel really good about extending out to five years on that deal. Pursuit of Martin, Paul Beeson, the Blue Jays president, and Alex Anthopoulos, their GM, met him in Montreal and they were in a coffee shop. And a woman came over and said something in French to Russell. And Paul Beeson, who doesn't speak French, said, What did she say? And he said, She said, Please come home. And Beeson said, I knew we had him then. They left a big tip, I bet. Somebody said to Beeson, did you set that up? He said, I wish I would have thought of it. 
Those are the last four seasons for Martin. 290 last year with Pittsburgh. Had yeah. the right year at the right time. Oh, yeah. He had 21 home runs with the Yankees in 2012. That's a career high. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on top of the fourth inning, five nothing Blue Jays. Saturday in Montreal, Russell's dad played O Canada on the sacks. Pretty cool moment for the two of them. Very emotional for Martin. He was given ovation after ovation. Olympic Stadium. Martin hanging in there. Yeah, music's a big part of his, his dad's life, and that's why uh, also Martin's middle name is Coltrane, after uh, John Coltrane, the noted music, jazz musician. Tanaka work uh, during this at bat, no matter what happens. Now, when the Blue Jays came up with the idea of playing a couple of games in Montreal, they said well, maybe we'll get 24, 25,000 a game. And for two years in a row, they've had 96,000 for two games. And as Kenny said earlier, people in Montreal kind of clamoring for it. Another team after losing the Expos. But the Blue Jays like it the way it is. They are the national team of Canada. Three two. Swung on and missed. Tanaka wins that battle and strikes out three batters in the fourth. Blue Jays strand two. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Nightly coverage of all happenings in baseball. Tune in to America's pregame at 5 p.m. for the setup to the games, and then at 7 p.m., catch MLB Whip Around for live look ins across all the major league contests. Baseball, all season long on FS1. Well, the crowd somewhat subdued as the Blue Jays have jumped out to a 5 0 lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth on the Lincoln scoreboard. It'll be Gardner, Beltron, and Teixeira, 2, 3, and 4 against Drew Hutchison as the Yankees are looking for their first hit. 
And there's a bunt down the third baseline, but foul. Gardner actually hit the ball harder than any of the Yankee this afternoon. He chased uh, Jose Bautista to the wall in right field, where he made a nice catch to rob him of a hit. That was back in the first inning. But Gardner trying to get something started here in the fourth, trying to lay down a bunt. And you can see Josh Donaldson, the third baseman for the Blue Jays, still in on the grass. Over three innings, the Yankees had one base runner. That was Alex Rodriguez leading off the third. Working a walk. Chop to second. Travis gets Garden. And the Yankees have spent a lot of time on the field today. The Blue Jays top of the order is already through their third at bat. That was just Gardner's second. Yeah, this is support. Uh, this is a sport where you don't want time of possession with the ball. You, you, you want to get out of there quick. Maybe in football you want that. No, but not in baseball. Quick stops at the dugout and back to the field. Now we talked about the Blue Jays' futility here in the Bronx. Drew Hutchison is the one who really halted it. Last year, he went six and two thirds against the Yankees and snapped a 17 game losing streak in the Bronx. And that was a big mental monkey on the back of, uh, of the Toronto Blue Jays. I really tied together a lot of cliches there. Mental monkey on the back. <laughs> I was letting that one digest a bit. <laughs> you have to let him simmer, Kenny. Yeah. Grounded to first, and Carnacion for the second out. Now so far, the Yankees have only hit the what three balls to the outfield, all of them to Jose Bautista. So Pompey in center and Pilar in left. They, they, they could have taken the afternoon off this one. Hutchison doing exactly what you should do with a five run lead and just throw strike after strike, but continue to pitch. A couple of good change ups in this mix and a couple of good curveballs. Struck out looking in the second. Now it's three and one. And a walk. Second base runner for the Yankees, second walk. And that's going to bring up McCann with a runner on first and two outs. Can had the big Yankee uh, stadium home run stroke here last year. I think 19 of his 23 home runs were hit here in the Yankee Stadium. His next home run he hits will be the 200th of his career. So it'll be a milestone home. And he bunts down the third baseline. They had to shift on, and it's a foul ball. So he's looking for an extra base hit on the bunt. He tried that a couple times last year as well. And Yankees worked on that during spring training. There's going to be shifts. Baseball now shifts all the time. And it's up for the players to solve it. Yeah, he's just trying to pass the baton to Chase Headley, who's behind him, and get him up there with two outs and two on. And hopefully that uh, Headley could get in the one. By doing that, he had Donaldson moving in on the left side. Donaldson actually was on the grass at the shortstop position. Now there's two strikes, so he can drop back. Oh. 
There's going to be pushback against these shifts. I, like I said, if I'm a hitter and they're all, you know, it depends on the score of the game, what time of the inning you bat. But as I said, if they're going to give it to you, I, just take it. Just, just take it. At least you're going to get one hit in the afternoon. Grounded fair down the right field line. Kicks off the sidewall played out there by Bautista. Moving to third is to share the Yankees first hit a single by Brian McCann and they have runners on the corners with two outs for Headley. We're looking for base runners as McCann tried to bunt and now turns back to the pole. And this ball smoked right over the bag as you see Encarnacion with the dive and not just enough. It was Jim Reynolds the first base umpire with the call a great camera work. As if uh, Reynolds was holding the camera. So the Yankees get their first hit now looking for their first run. They're down five nothing bottom of the fourth. Here is Chase Headley who struck out. In his first at bat in the second. Yeah, McCann was trying to get uh, Headley up there with two men on unconventionally with the bunt. But conventionally with the base hit he accomplished the same thing. Hutchison goes to the breaking ball for a strike. A lot of talk about the pace of play in the offseason and hitters staying in the box. Well, this game, sometimes these games just won't cooperate as we're in the bottom of the fourth, past 2 30 here, East Coast time. Yankees looking for a big home run right here, big, some big hit in the gap that can get them on the board and back into this game with plenty of time left. The bottom of the fourth. That was too good a pitch, 0 2. Had a good swing at that one. Sometimes as a pitcher, Dave, I, I'm sure you felt oh, I got away with it. So Martin wants it up. More in. He did get it above the belt and let her high as uh, Headley did have a good swing, though. Found it softly in the second base from the outfield grass. Travis makes the play, and the Yankees strand two. No runs to hit, no errors, and two men left. It's five nothing Blue Jays as we go to the fifth. Opening night last night when they swing a trade involving the Braves elite closer Craig Kimbrell going to the Padres along with the artist formerly known as B.J. Upton. That's the salary dump for the Braves. They get four players back and a draft pick. 
Now, Carlos Quentin has already been DFA'd by the Braves. That was just kind of matching salaries. That's all that was. They're rebuilding for the future. Meantime, Michael, I think the Padres really sending a message to the Dodgers and Giants in the division. We are in this. We're going to fight for that crown. And wouldn't you know it, Kimbrell is on a flight right now to Los Angeles, hoping to get there in time for the game or be involved in some way. It's San Diego against L.A. to start things off. Well, that was a deal, Bob, obviously, just to dump the Upton salary. And they said, listen, if you want Kimbrell, you've got to take the three years left on this guy. Upton has been such a disappointment since signing that five-year deal, so they rid themselves of him. It's over $46 million. You take a chance, but what you also have is Kimbrell, as we take a look at the Bigelow T scoreboard, 5 nothing Blue Jays. You get a chance with Kimbrell, three years under contract at about $11 million per year. Pretty reasonable numbers for a guy who can give you 40 saves a year. Talk about a team that's reinvented itself. A.J. Preller, the new GM of the Padres has wheeled and dealt and really raised payroll a lot. Now there's a lot of expectations. He has. They're getting a little relief from the Dodgers in the form of Matt Kemp and the, the numbers that they traded there. The player they traded with Kemp, Will Myers in that outfield. Well, they've got uh, Justin Upton as well. So the Upton brothers reunited once again. Well, nice to see you in the flash rather than on the television screen. Always is, Michael. Always good to be here with you. I'm just uh, kind of sitting and keeping the seat warm for David Cohn until he gets back. All right, so Bob will uh, we'll hear from him later and then on the postgame show with Jack Curry and John Flaherty as well. As you can see, a new pitcher for the Yankees is Chris Martin. And uh, he's one and two now on Jose Bautista. We're in the fifth inning in the Yankees. Trail Toronto 5 nothing. So Masahiro Tanaka goes four. He has that rough third inning. He gets his share of strikeouts. As he struck out six in four innings, uh, but that five run third was tough to overcome for him. Yeah, Blue Jays sent eight men to the plate in that inning. So Joe Girardi did not think he would have to, but he does make an early Verizon call to the bullpen. Bautista swinging. Yeah, we saw Martin in spring training, long and lanky, about six, seven, six foot eight, and that's what he did with the Colorado Rockies pitching at altitude last year, six point eight nine. The ERA probably at sea level is two point eight nine. But the fact is that he's got a good arm, good live fastball. You saw him put away Bautista on a breaking ball. Well, opening day, high expectations, and you always want to win. The Yankees have always done well on opening day. They're actually 15 and 2 in their home opener since 1998. But having to remove your ace after four innings, it's a bit of a cold play for Joe Girardi. But he does bring in Chris Martin to try to hold it right here at five nothing. Maybe this was a little bit of a surprise pick for the Yankees and Girardi and Chris Martin to make the roster, but this combination of mid 90s fastball and good control, I think he only walked one guy the whole spring, really opened a lot of eyes. Good leverage on his stuff, too, and with his height. Who's right in the They might be giving a little ground with this guy. He could dart that, uh, dot that outside corner with that breaking ball like he just did. He could be very, very effective. Trying it again. Meredith Morakovic has more on Chris Martin. Well, guys, really an unbelievable story for Chris Martin. He was drafted twice but never signed, went to community college, had an arm injury, shoulder issues, and couldn't pick up the ball and throw the same way without pain. He actually stopped pitching from 2005 to 2010. During that span, he was working at a Lowe's loading appliances. He actually thought he got maybe a little stronger doing that along the way, but it wasn't until a chance encounter with an old teammate where, which led to him playing catch with the teammate that he realized Wow, I can throw again. I don't have any more pain in my shoulder. From there, he got a couple tryouts. He used his own money to get himself there, wound up getting signed, and eventually, here in 2015, he makes the Yankees opening day roster. Oh, what a great story. Talk about stick to itiveness. And he strikes out Encarnacion. 
Well, you start moving refrigerators around, that's going to make you stronger, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, very impressive. Striking out to Bautista and Encarnacion back to back. And now he's got another tough hitter up there in Josh Donaldson. In fact, these three might be the, the toughest three, four, and five hitters in the league. They're all going to hit over 20 home runs. Hey, well, one to five in this order is pretty, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty tough to navigate. Pretty nasty. It's even more important when you look at Tanaka's outing, that the bottom of the order is what got that five run third inning started in a walk to the nine hole hitter. Devin Travis. Last year, the heart of the order this is what uh, their numbers look like. Now, Donaldson, of course, with the A's. A lot of home runs there in a league, in a sport where home runs really are not as prevalent as they used to be. Well, the feeling is that Donaldson's going to hit more home runs in Toronto than he did in Oakland because Oakland's not really a, a hitter's ballpark. Good pitch right there. Tyler Kepner of the Times had a story in yesterday's paper that there's about 1,500 fewer homers in the majors last year than there were in 2000. Well, we all know what part of the reason was <laughs> PED situation back in 2000. But that opens up baseball for better pitching, of course. We, we see that. Better base running, more base stealing. Sacrifice comes back into the game. Defense comes back into the game, even more important. It's hard to defense against a home run. So, all the things you were not seeing in the PED are, are, are coming back to Major League Baseball. It's not just home run derby. A lot more guys like this relief pitcher, Chris Martin, throwing 95 miles an hour, too. Yeah. That's an impressive inning for Chris Morton. He strikes out the side. Blue Jays go down in order. We're halfway through. It's 5 nothing Toronto. But I guess hooky is accepted on opening day. 
Here's A Rod. He walked in the third inning. The big low scoreboard 5 0 Toronto. It's like a Twitter sign, right? You only had so many characters, you had to squeeze it in. <laughs> Use a K. New generation nowadays. Learn spelling on Twitter. You don't even need vowels a lot of the time. Yankees finally got their first hit in the fourth inning, a single by McCann down the first baseline. You know, one thing that's been impressive in this A Rod return to baseball is his knowledge of the strike zone. We, we talked about the fact that he walked so much in spring training, didn't chase as many pitches, slider down and away, didn't even know for it. But somewhere along the line, I mean, he, he's kind of discovered. Or rediscovered with the strikes of when you're struggling, you're up there hacking at just about anything. And you're getting yourself out more often than not. Nine opening day games for A Rod as a Yankee, and in those nine openers, a 424 batting average. Full. Yeah, that's the one he. I bet he feels he should have hit. It was kind of right there. But you're leading off an inning. You might get another one. The target's low on the way, but you can see the pitch is almost belt high middle. Gives you a look right there, just a fraction of an inch. That one is driven out to right center. Pompey on the run, and he's going to play it on a hop. And A Rod. Gets his first hit of the season. Well, he did get another one to hit, and this one he didn't miss. Pompey was playing him kind of straight away, so that gap in right center was open. Targets low and away once again, and this is almost the same pitch he got before when he fouled it off. This time he's a little quicker to recognize it, get the head of the bat to it a little quicker, and drives it into the gap in right center field. The free play brought to you by New York Presbyterian, the official hospital of New York Yankees. Amazing things are happening there. As we slow it down for you and show you contact. Stephen Drew takes a strike. That shows the importance of getting ahead on counts. I mean, you get better pitches to hit. Now, there was a lot of thought coming in the spring training, or worry even, that Alex Rodriguez would be a distraction. And Joe Girardi said before the game, it wasn't at all. He said the first day of camp, obviously, there were more cameras and more people than usually, than we usually have. Popped up, right side. Travis makes the play. He said, but what people don't get, he said that our guys like having Alex around. He said they enjoy him. He enjoys being there. And Alex said that this spring, after missing all of last year, has meant the most to him. Because you realize how much you miss the game. Not missing the year. So obviously self-inflicted by Alex. But you know, he's going to be 40 year old this year. And you realize uh, there's more career in the rearview mirror than in the windshield. So chasing Shreve up to the Yankees. I mean, what is this? His 20th year. Yep. So he. There's a fountain of knowledge there for some of the younger players. I mean, you don't play 20 years in the major leagues without picking up something. I mean, you don't last that long. Maybe for the first time in his career as well, realizing that there's just some people that are not going to like you. I mean, you can't please everybody. There's people that are going to draw their own conclusions about what happened off the field. And uh -huh. There's really nothing you can do about that. All you can do is worry about. Your teammates playing the game, trying to sort of reinvent yourself. But there will be people that just will not like you or will not ever condone what you did. And there's nothing you can do about yeah. it. There is a bit of a generation gap there. Drew was three years old when Alex made his major league debut. Gregorius with a fly ball to right. Bautista makes the play for the second out. Hutchinson just got enough in on his hands to jam him, and he didn't get the good wood on it. And Hutchinson uh, today 
And David, I don't know if you agree with me. He, he's done a good job of keeping the fat part of the bat off the ball for the Yankees. They made contact. He's only struck out three, but really, outside of the ball that Brett Gardner's hit in the first inning, nothing's been hit really that hard. The Yankees have had uh, a lot of trouble squaring him up. Ellsbury with a fly ball to left. Pilar battling the sun. And he battles it right into the glove for the final out of the inning. No runs to hit, no errors, and one left. Let's go to the six. Five nothing Blue Jays. the stadium on opening day in the Bronx and it all started obviously it has to with the first pitch and the man who threw it right there <laughs> Joe Torrey has the arm feel it, it, it feels about 74 years old <laughs> 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 now you decided to go from in front of the mound thoughts uh, well I really didn't have the courage to <laughs> go up in the mound. I was trying to think of something poetic to say, but it just didn't work. In fact, Billy Crystal texted me. He says, no mound? And I texted back. I said, no guts. <laughs> Jason Shreve, the new Yankee pitcher, as he deals inside the Navarro. So Joe got a great ovation as he came out. Yankee fans remembering the four championships. And he cut the ball a little bit there. Right? I did. Rothschild's influence. He, he just uh, got all over me. And uh, I didn't throw a strike. But it looked like a strike for a minute. Well, the whole key is you don't bounce it, right? That's. That, I've, I've been hearing that for three days now. <laughs> but also, Joe, you took the jacket off because there's no restrictions. See exactly. That? Yeah. But again, on the other side of that, Kenny, if I didn't reach the plate, then that would really look bad. I could, couldn't use it as an excuse. See, Shreve had a good spring there. The numbers, Yankees trailing five nothing, and that one is hammered foul. Now, Joe Torre, obviously a Hall of Famer and the executive vice president of baseball operations in Major League Baseball, and we did see that. Joe Girardi was thinking about challenging and, and he actually stayed on the top step of the dugout. That's something you think has improved over last year. Well, we hope so, Michael. We, you know, we're just trying to find ways to shorten up the process. And, uh, you know, he went to the home plate umpire, which is what we're encouraging managers to do right now. Fly ball, right center, Ellsbury for the first out. Even though manager, even though the home plate umpire isn't making the bulk of the call, he's the closest one to the dugout. So, we figured we could get it done a little bit quicker that way. You know, one thing I liked about last year and all the changes that were made, you, you said that none of them were set in stone, and if it wasn't really working, you would change it as, as the season went on, and, and you did so. 
like the, the play at second base where the, uh, the transfer, exchange, yeah, the exchange transfer. play. I mean, they changed it back so it, it because it wasn't really working. And I thought that was, you know, sometimes you get set in your ways and you're not willing to make changes. I, I thought that was good for Major League Baseball last year. Well, we try, and Kenny, you know as well as I do, you know, the, the this game is so imperfect, mm -hmm. and uh, you want to make sure that you do listen to the people who play it. And, and you know the umpires during that process you have to understand they had to go by a one set of rules since we were replaying it and it had to look a certain way mm -hmm. so that's where that became you know just it just didn't seem right and, and the umpires agreed with it and then we just decided to uh, you know once the gl glove opened then, then basically that was going to be the exchange. One one count on Dalton Pompey. He's 0 for 2 today. Jason Shreve, the third Yankee pitcher. Tanaka started, went four. Chris Martin in the fifth, and now Shreve here in the sixth. Joe, you look at it shortstop and you don't see number two. Is it weird for you? Uh, yeah, it's weird, but I, this young man just seems like he has it all together. I was talking to Joe Girardi before the game, and uh, he seemed very comfortable with him. The young man came in and introduced himself to me. I was in Robbie Kakuza's office. He came in and introduced himself to me. And I, I think it's really probably the perfect type of player to, to take uh, over at shortstop. You were like a second dad to Derek. This is opening day. This is all he's ever known since he's 18. What do you think he's doing today? Is he on a beat somewhere? Uh, he's got he's got the ability to be <laughs> any beat. <laughs> I know the one thing that struck him, and it struck me the same way when I left managing. And the one thing that, that hit me was the fact that I I don't have a schedule to go by anymore. And and I know he had mentioned that more than once to me. Uh, and, and that's the unique part about being in a, in a game your whole life. And, and as far as I'm concerned, when I was a broadcaster, you know, when I was a manager, when I was a player, it was always picking up a schedule. You know, you're going to be on July 22nd or something like that. So it, this is so different now. And I'm sure he's enjoying it. 3 2 count on Pompeii. Grounded foul. But, but I could tell you, Michael, uh, I was excited about doing this today. Uh, I was excited when the Yankees asked me to do this, throw out the first uh, pitch. And it, it didn't keep you from getting nervous when you were walking out there and, and being out there. But it, it, there's no other place. I mean, when you think of Yankee Stadium, New York Yankees, what they represent, what their history is, uh, if, if you allow yourself to think about those things, uh, you can't help but get excited and uh, very nostalgic as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but Joe, with the cheers that you got when you walked out there, that's certainly well deserved. A Hall of Famer now. The fans that remember, and the ones that are too young to remember, they've been told by their fathers or, or grandfathers or moms and, and uh, grandmothers as to what you meant to this ball club, and it's certainly well deserved today. Yeah, I get, I get a lot of people saying thank you, just uh -huh. thank you. And, uh, but, you know the fact that the older I get the more grandmothers are the ones that these kids <laughs> tell me that they've been told about me. But You're right in your wheelhouse. That's right? Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my sweet spot. <laughs> uh, and you have a, a young man right here right next to you, David Cohen and you know players like David I'm sure they mean an awful lot to uh, what happened in your career. Well it's all about trust Kenny uh -huh. and you know David Cohn when it was touch and go whether we we're going to sign him or not and then you know they got my vote and I don't know how much weight that carried but when we did sign David it's it's just someone you trusted uh -huh. I mean when you think about probably the best decision I made in the 96 World Series and knowing David's personality I said you're going to pitch game three because you're the only one that ever pitched in Atlanta and uh, you know normally somebody with you know with his credentials uh, Oh, you know, it's a little ego shot, you know, <laughs> but uh, he, he understood. He went down there and, and stopped the bleeding for us in game three. And then I remember coming out and, uh, at, at Shea Stadium and bringing him in the fifth inning to pitch to Piazza. And he got a nice pop up with two out. You know who else remembers that? Denny uh, Nagel. Denny Nagel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I went out to Denny. I could see the look in his eye. He thought I was out there to tell him something, yeah. but I just took the ball. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember you going out in Atlanta talking to David on the mound. You were looking him right in the eye. That, that was a big decision in that game. Right. David lied to us. Yeah. 
Yeah, but you know what? They, I, yeah, I'm a little smarter than that. <laughs> <laughs> he lied to me, but once he lied to me, he right. had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's the difference with a guy like David Cohn. Once he made the commitment, it didn't care. You know, he didn't. It didn't matter what it cost him. He was going to get it done and, and find a way. Two two. You got to trick yourself, right? Trick yourself into believing. Sometimes that's a, the only time that I really had to second guess myself, I went out against Cleveland, and uh, you know Manny was the hitter, and I, I went out. How you doing? Hey, I'll get this guy, and that's what he said to me. I'll get this guy, and I left him in, and he popped up. I think Ramirez. And then I left him in the pitch to Tomei at a grand slam. <laughs> but I should have taken him at his word when he says, I'll get this guy. <laughs> Fly ball left field. Gardner's there. Joe, it's great to see you. What a great day. Congratulations on the first pitch and tonight as well at the Yankee Welcome Home Dinner. I'm looking forward to it, Michael. Thanks for letting me visit. Oh, so good to see you. That's Joe Torrey, Hall of Famer. No one will ever wear number six for the New York Yankees again. When we go to the bottom of the six, it's five nothing Blue Jays. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning here at Yankee Stadium. It's 5 nothing Blue Jays. Five runs on five hits for Toronto. No runs on two hits for the Yankees against Drew Hutchison. Two, three, and four in the Yankee order against the Blue Jays right-hander, starting with Brett Gardner. Gardner's 0 for 2. And the pitch is high. Gardner hit a screaming line drive to right. Second batter at the bottom of the first inning. Right to the wall. It drove Jose Bautista, who made a leaping catch. Held on to it. And then he grounded out to second in the fourth. So 0 for 2. You know, one thing managers have to be aware of early in the season, their starting pitchers are really still building up their arms somewhat. So the bullpens uh, sometimes come into play a little bit earlier in ball games, And you can see they're, they're getting loose out there just in case uh, the phone rings and somebody has to get up and start throwing. And I was thinking about last night's game in Chicago with Adam Rainwright of the Cardinals. It pitched a, such a fine game, but he only went six innings. As uh, Mike Bethany, his manager, got him out of there, went to the bullpen as the uh, Cardinals won three. And then Wainwright, he, he is a, uh, he's the real deal. That's a, that's an opening day start. Yes, it, yes, he is. And this kid right here is doing a pretty good imitation, though, as you see there, 50 strikes and 30 balls. High fly ball, Brent Field, Bautista back, track, wall, see ya! Home run, Brett Gardner, Yankees' first run of 2015, and it's 5-1 Toronto.
Well, I was watching Greg Gardner swing the bat during batting practice, and he was hitting quite a few into the seats. And last year, career high 17 home runs. He, he put a new dynamic to his offense. And uh, that's Pete Walker, the pitching coach of the Blue Jays, there. See his team scored upon for the first time this year. And somebody might be starting to throw in that Blue Jay bullpen pretty soon. The second good swing of the day from Gardner has almost had two home runs as Bautista made an outstanding play up against the wall in his first at bat. And a strike to Beltron. Count one and one. Beltron 0 for 2. Fly ball to right and a ground ball to first. Switch hitter batting from the left side. Shift is on. Three infielders on the right side. Aaron Loop up. High fly ball. Right field. Bautista back. On the track. He'll make the play for the first out. It's less than a quarter of an inch on the bat. Got underneath it. And it would have been back to back shots. Remember, Beltran did not hit a home run in spring training, but he seems to be getting a little bit closer right here, just underneath this one. That is a very frustrating thing for hitters. Mark Teixeira takes high. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees as Pete Walker will come out and talk with Hutchison. Yeah, this is like a standing eight count here just to give the bullpen a little bit of time to warm up a little bit more, give uh, Hutchison a little breather. You see they have the shift on for Teixeira and according to baseball solutions teams employed 13,000 shifts last year in 2011 just 2,500 so this is not going away did definitely not and it's up to the hitters now to make the adjustment that one is driven to right field Bautista getting a workout out there a little basket catch on the warning track for the second out. you kind of see a lot better swings off of Hutchison here as he approaches 90 pitches and to share a little on top of this one. The opposite of Beltran. A little too much topspin. Yeah, this is the sixth put out for Bautista in the game. As Michael said, he's getting a workout out there. That glove wasn't broken in before the game, it is now. Brian McCann got the first hit of the game for the Yankees. Two outs in the fourth inning, a single inside first. And past Encarnacion. They also shift for McCann. Now, the attempted bunt by McCann in the fourth inning, you could see it's changed the way Donaldson's playing it because he's halfway now between the infield and outfield grass. Before that bunt, he was on the outfield grass, the lip. And actually, as the pitch is being thrown by uh, Hutchison, he, he's moving in a bit. Not bunting on a 3 1 pitch here. You're looking for something that uh, he can get over Bautista's head in right field. Hey. Count three and two. So Hutchinson at 92 pitches. High fly ball. Left center. Pompey makes the play for the final out, but the Yankees get on the board. Brett Gardner, high fastball, goes yard. It's 5 1 Toronto.
Mitchell Hybrid of the New York Yankees. We go to the seventh inning here at the stadium. It's 5 1 Blue Jays after Brett Gardner's home run in the bottom of the sixth. Devin Travis takes outside from Jason Shreve, the Yankees' third pitcher. Cadillac scoreboard 5 5 0 oh for Toronto, 1 3 and 1 for the Yankees. Waved that one, one on one. That's Travis's first big league game. Played his college ball at the Florida State with legendary coach Mike Martin, who's been there a long time. And Travis was all ACC. High fly ball, deep left, going back. Gardner turning, looking. See ya. Devin Travis's first big league hit is a home run, and he is steaming around the bases as the Blue Jays lead six to one. Well, that's certainly going to make Mike Martin proud. One of his all ACC performers comes up. <laughs> uh, something you don't forget. You never forget your first. And this was a no doubter. Bad thing about hitting a home run for your first big league hit, you might not get the ball back. Yeah. So they're ignoring him, but he's pretending to high five people. <laughs> Good comeback. Well played. <laughs> one and one now on Reyes. Travis, a big part of this game, you know, aside from the home run we just saw in the yeah. first major league hit, but this big walk in the five run third. Kind of set up that inning on Tanaka. Reyes, a fly ball to center. One away. Second game of the series is Wednesday, and the Wednesday starting pitch was brought to you by Verizon Files, making life more entertaining with America's fastest, most reliable internet. That's powerful. Michael Pineda has been powerful. During the spring, five and five last year. Great ERA, RA Dickey, 14 and 13, 3.71. We promise we'll have the game and everything before it on yes, and it all starts with the coverage at 6 p.m. Well, that's going to do it for Chase and Shreve as Joe Girardi signals to the bullpen with Russell Martin due up. Yankees trail this one six to one. As the Yankees have used four pitchers today Tanaka Martin Shreve and now Carpenter last year with the Braves 67 strikeouts in 61 innings. And
And he will face Russell Martin. Russell one for three in his uh, regular season debut with the Blue Jays. That one is chopped to short, backing up for the hop. Gregorius and he shows off the arm for the second out. Carpenter, yet another uh, pitcher, bolster the bullpen, picked up by the Yankees over the winter. And another guy throws pretty hard. I mean, another guy throws 95. That was Shreve and Carpenter that came over in the Manny Banuelos trade. Is longtime lefty prospect uh, Manny Banuelos is still trying to recover from his Tommy John surgery. You can see the method to the madness of John Hart of what he's doing with the Braves. He's trading all of his established players because they had such a bad farm system, and he's just getting young. He's trying to get young pitchers and building that up so that they're ready when they move into their new ballpark in 2017. Taking a flyer on Banuelos, who was highly thought of before he got hurt. Fly ball to center off the bat of Bautista. And Ellsbury makes the play. The Blue Jays get a run on Travis's home run, his first big league hit. Nobody left on base. At the end of six and a half, it's the Blue Jays six and the Yankees one, but we'll stay right here to honor America in the Bronx. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise and remove your caps and please direct your attention to the area behind home plate as the New York Yankees welcome an honored military guest who is joined by his girlfriend, United States Army Captain Michael Britt from Edison, New Jersey, who served in Operation Enduring Freedom. The Yankees say thank you for your sacrifice and service to our nation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Please direct your attention to the microphone behind home plate and welcome one of the stars of Broadway's Dr. Zhivago, Paul Nolan. He will now sing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her. Through the night with a light from above From the mountains to the prairies To the oceans white with foam God bless America My home sweet you now to join in as Yankee Stadium organist Paul Cartier plays Take Me Out to the Ball Game.
Cubs with a 4 nothing lead on the Twins. You had assessment as his double, triple, and Rob Kurt Suzuki of a homer in that one. David Price allowing just three hits to the Twins into the eighth inning so far. The Rockies lead Milwaukee 6 nothing. Corey Dickerson uh, in that one. A two-run home run. Milwaukee's Kyle Loesch lit up for four runs. Boston and Philly just underway. Quick strike for Dustin Pedroia, his first homer of the season. In his first at bat off Cole Hamels, it's 1-0 Boston there in the bottom of the first. And the O's and Rays just underway. Chris Tillman against Chris, against Chris Archer in that one. Michael, back to you. Well, thank you, Bob. It's going to be interesting. It almost seems like the team that gets Cole Hamels could shift <laughs> the balance of power in the American League East. So he gives up a home run early to a Dustin Pedroia. We'll hear from Bob and Jack and uh, Flash after the game. Right? You just promoted along with Meredith. Absolutely. That's right. There he is. Looks great, doesn't he? Chase Headley swings at the first pitch from Aaron Luke and skies it to right field. Bautista makes the play. One away, so Luke comes on for Hutchison. Can I have it counted yet? But I think Bautista's had a lot of putouts out there. Let's see. One, two, three, seven, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight putouts. Here's Alex Rodriguez. Walked and single to right center. Cadillac scoreboard 6 1 Toronto. Count on one. You could see from Luke's delivery how he would be difficult for lefties. Maybe a little bit longer look uh, for a right-handed hitter. He was a big part of the bullpen last year. Made a lot of appearances for the Blue Jays. That one's driven into right center field. And that ball is caught by Bautista. Bautista trying to earn the gold glove here in the first game of the season. After all those chances, I guess that's number nine, as you guys said. And not too many have dropped in out there, so yes, he's caught everything in his vicinity today, including one up against the wall. Here's Stephen Drew, 0 for 2. And a strike. Now, Kenny mentioned the makeup of this bullpen. The closer is Brett Cecil. And that's going to be a question mark for the Blue Jays. He has six career saves. So how will he handle that new role? Plus he had shoulder trouble in spring training. They had to shut him down for a little bit. And you could say the same thing about the Yankees because mm -hmm. their prospective closers really haven't been closers. Andrew Miller and uh, Dellen Batances. Now the makeup of this Yankee team with the bench the way it is. They're really heavy lefty, the Yankees. So when a manager brings in a lefty, Joe George is going to have to pick his spot when he's going to pinch hit. So it's lefty lefty here with Drew up. And also because it's so lefty unbalanced, and there's the Yankee bench with Gary Jones, the lefty, and three righties. That's why Alex Rodriguez is so important to this team to actually do well to give it a little more balance from the right side. And that's one of the reasons that they made a quick trade for Gregorio Petit because he bats right handed as a middle infielder backup. Grounded to second. Travis and the Yankees go down in order against Aaron Loop. One, two, three. And we're going to go to the eighth inning. Six, one, Toronto.
brought to you in part by Blimpy. Try one of the new oven-fried artisan flatbread sandwiches. Blimpy, America's sub shop. By Mazda. Mazda's KBB.com's lowest cost to own brand in over five years. And by the New York Lottery. Hey, you never know. That was a GW Bridge. It's a 20 years ago, eighth inning. The scooter would have been on the bridge going the other way by now. Hyundai scoreboard 6 1 Toronto leading the Yanks. Encarnacion against David Carpenter. Got the final two outs of the seventh inning. The breaking ball. Two run home run off Tanaka in the third inning. So much of the buildup to today's game, David, was about Tanaka. He had that bad third inning. He lasted just four. What'd you see? I saw good. I saw a lot of good things early in the game. Really came out smoking in the first couple of innings. His velocity was up to 93 miles an hour after all the talk of the lack of velocity in spring training. Even Pedro Martinez chiming in on what he supposedly saw in a couple innings on TV, I'm sure. But I don't think it was about the stuff. It was about the location for Tanaka. And the five-run third inning, he just kind of lost his location. That one's popped up. Headley in foul territory. Take a look back in the third, but the big blow, as you see on the Encarnacion, the type of hitter that he is. When you're trying to throw a fastball in, you better miss in off the plate. And that one was towards the middle of the plate. And he burned Tanaka there with a long home run. A couple of walks, too, are that walk to Devin Travis, I think, set up that inning. And, of course, the bunt. Tanaka kind of got in the way of Headley on the bunt by Reyes. And Headley couldn't quite get a handle on it. And that caused the error and the throw down the line, which was right in the middle of that five run inning. Donaldson swings and misses. But actually, I thought his stuff was pretty good. I think he just kind of lost his location in that one inning. And there was a little more fastball than what we saw for the most part in spring training. He definitely. He was 90 to 93 on velocity, which is exactly what he was last year. My thinking is when you're a veteran pitcher, you, you know you're going to make the team. You don't show all your cards in spring training. I, at least I wouldn't think so. What's he going to prove that you can strike somebody out in spring training? Like you said, it's a time for some veterans to work on things. He was working on his two seat fastball. Well, all the talk of the, the Blue Jays and their top five hitters is really the bottom of their order that did damage today and set everything up. Kevin Pillar's had a great day. And of course, Devin Travis. And the eight and nine hole hitters really hurt the Yankees today. It is opening day indeed. Yankees Blue Jays. Swing and a miss. 94 miles an hour. Two away. Hey fans, don't miss a great giveaway that will help you follow the Yankees all season long. It's this Friday, April 10th. When the Yankees take on the Red Sox, it's magnetic schedule night, and all guests in attendance are going to receive a Yankees 2015 magnetic schedule courtesy of AT&T. Now, for tickets, log on to Yankees.com, visit the Yankee Stadium ticket window, Yankees clubhouse shops, or call Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. Here's Navarro. One for three. Slow roll of the third was the base hit. That was in the second inning. Started out his career with the Yankees. Bounced around a bit. Cubs, Tampa Bay for a while. Really looked like he was going to get traded in the offseason once they signed Russell Martin. And he was looking for a trade. And the Blue Jays said no. There's a lot of interest, too, in Navarro. He's not really your prototypical DH. But the Blue Jays are more interested in holding on to him. A very comfortable contract and as a backup to Barton and switching him around, DH, and keeping that bat in the lineup. 
Also, I uh, should mention he's with the, the Dodgers for a while. I think one of the keys for the Blue Jays this spring was who's going to catch uh, R.A. Dickey? Well, it's going to be Russell Martin. Josh Toll has been sent to the minor leagues, so it's going to be Russell Martin who draws that sign. That should be interesting on Wednesday night. Here's R.A. Dickey, former Cy Young Award winner with the Mets. And now uh, throwing that knuckleball. Knocked down by Carpenter. And he will get Navarro for the final out of a 1 2 3 inning. So Carpenter has phase five, retired the ball as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Hasn't been a good time for the Yankees so far as they trail six to one as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. D.D. Gregorius will lead off. Look at him. Oh, goodness. And he'll take first. And I was saying uh, that he loop the way he throws can be very uncomfortable for a left-handed hitter. I wasn't thinking that uh, much discomfort. He got him on the elbow. Of the throwing arm. That just did not sound good at no, all. It Boy, didn't. it makes you hold your breath. First game as a Yankee. And he's smiling though, and he's, he's checking with Stevie to see how Stevie's doing. Get another look. Oh. He does have a little pad there just uh, near the elbow, and that might have uh, gotten some of the pad. That could account for maybe the sound. Yeah. yeah. Padding or no padding, that's that's kind of smart a bit. You see the new first baseman Justin Smoke in there defensively. Well, the Yankees looking for a late rally here as they go back to the top of the lineup. Gregorius at first, Ellsbury at the plate, Ellsbury 0 for 3. Ellsbury missed a lot of spring training with an oblique injury. Monday scoreboard 6 1 Blue Jays lead. Played a couple of the games at the end, said he was fine. Now, both of these teams, I wouldn't say reinvented themselves, but they certainly changed a lot of parts. Of the 25 players in the Yankees' opening day roster last year, only 11 are still in the organization. And of the 25 players on this roster, 
nine joined the club for the first time following the end of last year. And as for the Blue Jays, Buck Martinez told me this. I, I couldn't believe it. He said the Blue Jays over the offseason got rid of 25 guys that played major league games for the Blue Jays. So essentially a whole roster they got rid of. Strike three. That was a tough, tough at bat for Ellsbury. He did not look comfortable. Soccer Saturday on Yes returns this weekend when NYCFC plays an away match against the Philadelphia Union. Join New York's newest team. Watch New York City FC on Yes, presented by Eddie Hall Airways. Saturday at 5, immediately following Yankees Red Sox coverage, and it's only on Yes. It's NYFC. And here is Brett Gardner, the Yankee offense today, a home run in the sixth. And there's a strike. Now, as you can see, the way this lineup is configured, a manager feels very comfortable from eight to two. Drew, Gregorius, Ellsbury, and Gardner. Then the switch hitters come, but there's a spot that you could really get comfortable and just use that one left-hander out of the pen. And if... Uh... John Gibbons wants to give Loop a break after pitching in these two innings. He's got a right hander warming up. Even though the switch hitters are coming to, to force here. You know, one way that Joe could break that up is if, if Alex proves that he can play. Well, you could move Alex up to six, McCann the seventh, and then Headley maybe drops the eighth right after Drew. Not quite sure. Or, I mean, there's got to be a way to, to break that up at the bottom because it makes it too easy for the op opposition to, uh, to count. That one is looped to left field. Pilar is there. Two out. Yeah, it does set up an inning where opposing manager, once he gets the lineup from the Yankees that day, he says, well, here's where I can use my left. Here's my Aaron Loop section. Uh -huh. Well, as Kenny said, Aaron Loop, too, one of the toughest lefties in the American League with a platoon advantage. Yeah, and plus, he's just wild enough. You know what I mean? He, he walked 30 men in 50 something innings last year, so he's not really honed in on the strike zone. So Beltron, the switch hitter, spins to the right side against Loop. He takes the pitch out of the zone 1 0. Carlos is 0 for 3 tonight. Two fly balls to right and a ground ball to first. Fly ball to right, the six was taking Bautista to the warning track. Crowd of 48,469 here at the stadium, opening day. So by bringing in smoke, Gibbon has used one of his three players on the bench to tighten up his defense. The 2-0. Yeah, I think a couple of things here work with bringing smoke. And number one, smoke's a better defender than Encarnacion. We mentioned Encarnacion had a bad back in spring training. It's a chance for him to get off his feet, get in the clubhouse, and if he needs any treatment on that back, he can get it done before uh, uh, the game on Wednesday. Two and two on Beltron. I don't think Luke has thrown anything but a fastball so far. It's a lot quicker than you think he is, too, at 93. Right by Beltron. So Beltron turned it up a notch here, but maybe a notch too far. Can he pulled it foul? Goes off speed there, the count three and two. So that's going to release Gregorius at first. And he 
Walker. So now first and second with two men out. And John Gibbons going to go to his bullpen. Mark Teixeira do up. Yankees trying to get back in this. They trail 6 1. Pitching change. Stick around. Could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Buy your Tri Honda dealer. Hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2015 models. And by People's United Bank. See what know how can do. A stroll through Monument Park. And this year there's going to be three more numbers put out there Andy Pettit, Jorge Posada, and Bernie Williams will all be honored here at the stadium. And also there'll be a plaque put up out in Monument Park for Willie Randolph. Miguel Castro making his major league debut as he comes in to face Mark Teixeira. And yeah, Castro last year was pitching in Canada, it just wasn't Toronto. He was pitching for Vancouver in the Northwest League, which is able. But uh, he's just 20 years old and he's got an arm. So. Uh, He's in the big leagues this year. Runner goes from second. The throw to third. Oh, you cannot get thrown out of third with two outs and down by five. That is not a good play by D.D. Gregorius as that will end the inning. And Joe Girardi looking on kind of in shock. What was D.D. thinking? No runs, no hits, no errors. And because of this caught stealing, just one man left on base. We go to the ninth.
the uh, final play of the last inning, and I, I, this is kind of hard to fathom. You know, Donaldson well off the bag with a left-handed hitter there, but uh, Gregorius probably thought he could make it. It was a bad choice. And uh, Joe Girardi you can see his reaction. He got Mark Teixeira, who's up there with capability of hitting a three-run homer. 90 feet wasn't going to mean all that much. And he chose to try and steal third without any success. Not a good play. Justin Wilson, the new Yankees pitcher, 6 1 Toronto leads in the ninth inning here on opening day. And David will recall this that we had Joe Torrey in this dugout or in this in this uh, booth earlier. And when Derek Jeter was a rookie in 1996, he tried to steal third with two outs in Chicago, I believe. And uh, Torrey was incensed. And he said, I'm going to leave it till tomorrow. It was the end of the inning, obviously. Gita played shortstop, and then at the end of that inning, he came and sat right down next to Joe Torre, knowing that he had done something wrong. And Torre said, Get out of here. He said, I didn't have to tell him. Now, D.D. Gregory is not a rookie. Though. Oh, he's not a rookie. Uh, obviously, got a little ahead of himself there, trying to make something happen in a situation where a three run home run gets you back in the game. That one is hard to figure. Here's the 2 1. Three and one to Pompey. Yankees have used four relievers today. Tanaka started last in just four innings. And then Chris Morton, Jason Shreve, David Carpenter, and Justin Wilson. And a walk to Pompey. Stick around after the last out for the WB Mason Post Game. Bob Lorenz, Jack Curry, and John Flaherty recap all the opening day festivities. And of course, Meredith Morakovic gets the reaction from the clubhouse, including Joe Girardi's opening day thoughts. It's all coming up, and it's right here on Yes. Here's Kevin Pilar against Wilson. Trouble with the strike zone. Pilar really did some damage today. Got that five run third started with a hit. You see Justin Wilson last year with the Pirates. 61 strikeouts and 60 innings. 30 walks though. There's another guy who can rush it up there though. I remember speaking to uh well, Captain Derek Jeter last year and Brian Roberts during his time with the Yankees a year ago. And both of them agreed there are more hard throwers in the game now than when they first came to the big leagues. And a lot of these guys reside in the bullpen. Yankees got Wilson from the Pirates in the deal that sent Francisco Cervelli to Pittsburgh. James Smythe, who does stats for us, dug it out. The game that we we're talking about with Jeter was August 12, 1996, in Chicago against the White Sox. It was a 2 2 game, top of the eighth, two on, two out. Cecil Fielder up, Ooh. and Jeter was caught stealing by Ron Carcabice. Yankees lost that game 3 2 in 10 innings, but Jeter learned a lesson. Ron Carcabice, his, his nickname was Officer Carcabice because he could catch you stealing. Quick release. I yeah, he did. Well. Yeah. For a catcher, getting rid of it. Just about as important as arm strength. Yankee fans will remember Thurman Munson. Thurman would get rid of it as quickly as anybody from any angle. It wasn't about arm strength with Thurman Munson. It's about how quickly he could get it down to second base or third. Shot. Some beautiful shots today by our crew all over the field. And Pilar down on strikes. Wilson kind of tied him up with looked like a fastball in. 
see. There's the target. A little cut action on that pitch. Yeah. Brian McCann could have caught that with blindfold. It was right to the glove. Okay, we've mentioned about the changes in baseball over the last several decades. And Major League Baseball instituting sort of the speed up rules this year, and trying to get back to the the way the game was used to play. Keep one foot in the in the batter's box. Runner goes, throw to second, not in time. Stolen base for Pompey. Yeah, great jump. McCann really had no chance. Gone. McCann makes a good effort, but. It's futile. It's futile at that point. Yeah, Pompey had stolen the three out of fourth. He is uh, well, a little bit more than a third of the way down there, and Wilson has not released the ball as of yet. The game has changed in a lot of ways, Kenny. You know, just to finish that point. It used to be pitchers pitch to contact more. You know, you've seen the strikeouts go up and up and up every decade. And as you mentioned, a lot more hard throwers in the bullpen. The value of a strikeout nowadays. Pitchers pitch into the corner much more. And stylistically, the, the game has changed from a pitching standpoint. Whereas back in the day, pitchers used to pitch to contact more, throw the ball over the plate more often, put the ball in play, move the game along. You look at games back in the 30s and 40s, and batters did keep one foot in the batter's box in between pitches. Here's my point, too. I, I think the acceptance of striking out is what bothers me. You understand what I mean? It just strike out also want to go back to the bench. You just there's too many guys with a well over 100 strikeouts. I mean, the MVP last year struck out over 180 times, and he's upset about it too. He says that's one thing. Mike Trout said he's going to do this year, cut down on his strikeout. He says he's going to try to cut it in half. He struck out over 180 times. Yeah, that's tough to do, but all his other numbers were off the charts. True. The emphasis on power pitching and power hitting. Two sides of the coin, as you point out. Blue Jays have struck out 10 times today and they're still winning the game. Look out. So two walks by Justin Wilson, first and second, one out. Wednesday night on Yes, Michael Pineda makes his season debut as the Yankees face off with the Blue Jays in game two of this opening series. Pre-game coverage will begin at six with Audi batting practice today. It's right here on Yes. Then that the Blue Jays have struck out 11 times today. They marked the one by Wilson this inning. There's Jose Reyes. He is 0 for 2, but his sack bunt in the third kind of set the wheels in motion for a five run Blue Jay inning. That one is grounded to Chase Hadley. Steps on the back for one. Fires to first. Scoop by Teixeira, but not in time. Reyes beat it out. Took a little too long for Headley to get to the bag to turn that. Plus the fact that Jose Reyes now in his early 30s still has some pretty good speed. At one time he was one of the fastest players in the game. That was closer than I thought. There's Headley's throw and a good play by Teixeira on the other end to pull it out of the dirt. Yeah, he was saved. Watch that right foot on the bag before wow. Teixeira makes the play. Great camera work once again. And good umpiring by Jim Reynolds on a close play. He got it right. A lot less pressure on the umps now. You get it wrong, it gets overturned by your own because the umpires are the guys manning the replay. Hey. You know, as each year passes by, it becomes easier and easier to, to sort of accept it. Although you, you still get the sense umpires take pride in getting it right, obviously. Well, nobody wants to be overturned. It's like a lawyer, you know, going in to get your, you know, your case overturned. <laughs>
Russell Martin, big two run single in that five run third. He's one for four in his first game as a Blue Jay. A lot of people wonder will the Pirates be as good without him? All he got out of that staff and his leadership in the clubhouse. Kenny mentioned earlier, Francisco Cervelli is now the everyday catcher, which is something he's always wanted, so he finally gets his opportunity. And had a big spring, too. His first spring as, as a pirate. Cervelli clearly going to be the number one catcher there and get the bulk of the duty. Yeah, hopefully he can stay injury free. It, it seemed like uh, he'd have a great spring with the Yankees. In fact, I think not this year. Uh, it was last year, I think, Cervelli led the Yankees in home runs in spring training at four or five. Spoils that one. Count two and two. Martin's two run single off of Tanaka two. That was a big blow. Middle of that inning. First pitch goes down on, on the outside corner on a 93 mile an hour fastball and shot it to right. Yeah, that was some good hitting. It, you know, sometimes you get up there with a couple men on base and you're thinking, man, I really got to pull something, hit something really hard. Just took what he gave, him, something out over the plate, went the opposite field for the hit. First pitch swinging and clearly looking to go the other way or looking out over the plate. Martin knows Wilson. He caught him the last two years with the Pirates. So he knows you have to make him throw strikes. He's walked two already this inning. Runners go 3 2. He walked three this inning and the bases are loaded. Well, any slim hope that the Yankees might have in the bottom of the ninth, they've got to stop it right here where the base is loaded and they're already down 6 1. Joe Girardi is going to go to the bullpen with the dangerous Jose Bautista do up. We go to the bullpen. Stay tuned.
Well, after a single and a walk to open things up, Jose Reyes laid down a butt. It was thrown away by Headley, and things began to unravel even more. Russell Martin with a base hit, drove in two runs, then a two run home run. All this in the third inning, folks, by Headley and Canacion in the Blue Jays had scored five runs on three hits and one error against Masahiro Tanaka. A big moment in this game. Esmil Rogers comes in the Yankees fifth reliever used today bases loaded and Jose Bautista at the plate looking to really break this open it's significant at 6 1 1 and 0 now you got the shadows starting to creep up around the home plate area might make it a little bit more difficult for the hitter you make a mistake to Bautista you know the lights could be completely out. Yeah, former teammates right here, so they once again know each other. Slider. Have a rally in their bones, they come up at the bottom of the ninth, down 6 1. Hey, tonight on Yes, the Nets continue their playoff push with a battle against the Portland Trailblazers. Live coverage starts at 6.30 with the Verizon Fios pregame. Then Wednesday night at 7.30 on Yes 2, the Nets take on the Eastern Conference leading Atlanta Hawks. Now, for a full listing of the channel locations for the Nets on Yes 2, please go to yesnetwork.com. All right, we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Yankees are down six to one. Miguel Castro deals to Mark Teixeira, and Teixeira pops it up. Coming on Pilar, and he calls off Reyes to make the catch. One pitch, one out. Castro came in in the eighth with runners on first and second to share at the plate. Through one pitch, Gregorius tried to steal third, was gunned down, end of the inning. So the first out that he recorded as a big leaguer he got on the base paths Castro's just 20 years old 
born on Christmas Eve 1994. And he is the youngest pitcher in Blue Jays history. Ouch. Christmas Eve 1994. That stings a little, Michael. <laughs> Young Blue Jay arms have kind of flown under the radar all spring. This kid is one of them. I mean, we've seen him light up the gun so far today. Breaking ball dropped it on the outside corner. Yankees down to their final out. And he's got one of these to go with it. As you can see, he kind of breaks around the plate, but Russell Martin is known for good hands and good framing ability. He wants the ball in. You see right there, boy, maybe just shaves. The outside corner at best, but Russell Martin made it look very good as well. Pitch to Chase Headley outside. Shadow starting to come into play. As home plate in the shadows, the pitcher in the sun. Blue Jays have another 20 year old out in the bullpen, Roberto Asuna. Yes, another hard thrower. Yeah. So under the radar, the Blue Jays feel very good about some of their young arms. Another youngster in the rotation because uh, you, you mentioned some of the injuries they had, but uh, Daniel Norris, a left hander, has got electric stuff as well. Yeah, you're going to see him in the third game of this series. The kid, uh, the story about him that lives in his van, kind of a surfer, free spirit. We saw him pitch in the spring. He's got good stuff too. Yankees have had one 6 1 loss on opening day. That was in 1947 on April 15th. But the real news in baseball was across town that day. Jackie Robinson made his debut. A rod on deck. As Headley has worked the count to 3 2. So Castro deals. Line right at smoke, and that will do it as the Blue Jays beat the Yankees six to one on opening day. So the Blue Jays with a five run third inning against Masahiro Tanaka never looked back. They added a run on a Devin Travis home run in the seventh, and the Yankees' only run came on Brett Gardner's home run in the sixth inning. So the Yankees lose six to one. The home opener here at Yankee Stadium in front of a crowd of 48,469. We'll come back, pick out the big plays, wrap things up as well, get ready for the post game. Keep it right here on Yes, Blue Jays 6, Yankees 1.